write each answer as a fraction and as a decimal rounded to four decimal places, okay? What are our two acute angles in this first triangle? Zoe? S and R. S and R. So S is going to be one. R is going to be the other one. Guys, what is the tangent of S? What is the tangent of S? Gabby? 10 over 24. Why are we not using 26? It's the hypotenuse. Tangent does not use the hypotenuse, okay? So 10 over 24, if you plug that into your calculator, what do we get? Oh, no. 39.8. Oh, wait, no, no, no. Sorry, that was, that's the final answer. Never mind. 0.4? Yeah. Remember, it said four decimal places, right? So 10 divided by 24. 0 0.4167. 10 divided by 24. Put it in your calculator. And we would round it on our quiz or our test to 0 0.4. We are doing the tangent of S. Okay, did it ask us to find the angles? It says find the tangents of the acute angles. Yeah. Okay, so all we need to find is the tangent of S. Now, if we wanted to find the actual angle, what would we do, guys? You would take the tangent inverse of that number. Does that make sense, guys? Because if we wanted to find S, S is going to be the tangent inverse of 0 0.4167, okay? But it's not asking us for the actual angle. What's it asking for, us for? The tangent, okay? So we're going to leave it like this, okay? What would the tangent of R be? It would be 24 over 10, which is just 2.4. Questions? Christian? You guys, I'm going to say this one more time. We are not taking the tangent of 10 over 24. The tangent of S is the ratio of the sides. Tangent is a ratio. If you wanted to find the angle, you would take the tangent inverse of 10 over 24. But we are not looking for the angle. We're just looking for the tangent. You guys have to make that distinction. So the tangent is different than the actual angle. Does that make sense, guys? Christian, does that help? Okay, so for this bottom one, right? It says, describe and correct the error in writing the statement of the tangent ratio for the given figure. What's the tangent of K? They put 24 over 32. What was their mistake? Sophia? Excellent, it should be the other way around because they went adjacent over opposite. It should be opposite, which is 32 over 24. Because K is right here, right? It goes opposite, which is 32, over the 24. Why aren't we using the 40 here? It's the hypotenuse, okay? So you're not going to use the hypotenuse for tangent. Correct. In this lesson. Questions on the warm-up? Savannah. Tangent is a ratio, correct. It's going to be the ratio of the opposite side over the adjacent leg. Okay. okay? Good questions. Any other questions? Okay, so today we learned about tangent yesterday, okay? There's two more trig ratios that we're going to need to know. They are sine and cosine, okay? So the sine ratio, okay, is the length of the leg opposite over the length of the hypotenuse. So sine now uses hypotenuse, okay? So it's gonna be opposite, the opposite side over the hypotenuse. So in this figure, if we're finding the sine of A, right? What is the side opposite A? Little A. Little A. And it's gonna be over, what's the hypotenuse? C. C, so A over C. So the sine of A is A over C. The cosine of A is going to be the leg adjacent to A, 
which would be B, right? Over the hypotenuse, which is C, okay? So sine and cosine both involve the hypotenuse. Sine is gonna be the opposite over the hypotenuse, and cosine is going to be the leg adjacent over the hypotenuse. What is tangent? Very good, opposite leg and the adjacent leg. Opposite leg over the adjacent leg, okay? Now, there is a cool little acronym to memorize this, okay, and I'll show you it in a moment. But do we all understand where these sine of A, cosine of A, sine of B, and cosine of B are coming from? Mm -hmm. All right. So there's something called, and you may have heard it, SOHCAHTOA, okay? I want you guys to use three different colors here, okay? SOH is for sine, okay? SOHCAHTOA. And SOH stands for sine is equal to, what do you think the O stands for? Opposite. Opposite. Over, H stands for hypotenuse. Wow. Okay. K starts with a C, so we're dealing with what ratio? Cosine. cosine. So cosine is equal to, what's the A stand for? Adjacent. Adjacent. Over, what's the H stand for? Hypotenuse. And TOA, so ka TOA. TOA starts with a T, so we're dealing with? Tangent. And tangent is opposite over? Adjacent. Over adjacent. Hopefully I spelled everything right, but I probably didn't. And you guys will be using Sokotoa for the rest of your math careers. Oh, You're welcome. <laughs> yes. Will be your saving grace on a test or a quiz. So ka toa. It'll get you out of a lot of problems. All right. So let's start to Oh whoa. What is the same about the sine and cosine ratios? Oh guys, what is the same about the sine and the cosine ratios? Very good. Go ahead and highlight that the hypotenuse is both the denominator for the sine and cosine ratios, okay? That is super important because it leads to some interesting relationships with sine and cosine, okay? Since they both have the same denominator, there's some interesting relationships that occur with sine and cosine, and we're going to talk about those. All right, questions about Sokotoa. Do we all see how Sokotoa could be very, very useful to us in memorizing those relationships? Yeah. All right. Very good. Okay. So example one, express the sine of A, the cosine of A, and the tangent of A in this problem. Okay. So first, A. Oops. I'm writing with a highlighter. Let's write the sine of A. Remember, so... SOH, put that at the top of your page. Sine is going to be equal to what? Opposite over hypotenuse. The opposite of A is three, so it's gonna be three over and a hypotenuse is five. Very good, Sophia. All right, second one, we've got cosine of A. Cosine is ka, so ka, C-A-H. Cosine is? Adjacent over hypotenuse. What's our adjacent side to angle A? Four. What's the hypotenuse? Five. Four over five. I should make what extra credit? Like, like what each stands for. Toa. Nope. Not happening. Toa. Tangent of A is equal opposite to what? Over opposite over adjacent. What's opposite angle A? Three. The three. And what's the adjacent leg? Four. Four. All right, example B. 
we need to find the sine of b, the cosine of b, and the tangent of b as fractions. What would the sine of b be? Zoe? 4 over 5. 4 over 5. The opposite leg over the hypotenuse, which is 5. But remember, for b, we're looking at angle b, right? That side opposite is going to be the 4 now, okay? All right, so 4 over 5. What would be the cosine of b? Xavier? 3 over 5. And what would be the tangent of b? Toa. So it's going to be opposite over adjacent. So it would be 4 over 3. That's a 4, by the way. Questions. Are these ratios the angles? No. These are just ratios of the triangle, okay? They can help us find the angles by taking the inverse of each of them, okay? But they are not the actual angles. They are ratios of the triangle. Are we Gucci there? All right. So, do you remember how I told you since sine and cosine both have the hypotenuse in their denominator? They have some interesting relationships, okay? The sine of any angle is equivalent to the cosine of its complement. What does complementary mean? They add up to 90, right? So in a right triangle, do you agree that one of the angles has to be 90? Yes. So if we said that this was 4, this was 5, and this was 6, right? This isn't an actual right triangle, but this was angle A and this was angle B, right? Do you agree that A plus B should equal 90 degrees? Yeah. So the sine of angle A is going to be 4 over 5. Agreed? No, excuse me. 4 over 6. Do you guys agree with that? Mm -hmm. Wouldn't the cosine of 90 minus A be the cosine of this angle, B? Because A minus 90, or 90 minus A will give me angle B. And the cosine of B is just 4 over 6 as well. Okay? So the fact that B and A have a relationship that they're complementary means that the sine of any angle A is the cosine of that same angle of 90 minus that angle. In other words, cosine of B. The cosine of A is the sine of 90 minus that angle. Okay, because A and B in a right triangle are going to be complements of each other. Emma? Yes. So let's break it down a little bit further, okay? Do you guys agree that in this right triangle, right, B and A added together need to be what? 90. 90, right? So B is the same as 90 minus whatever angle A is, uh -huh. right? So that's how we get the relationship. The sine of A, right, uh -huh. would be 4 over 6. Yeah. And that's going to be equivalent to the cosine of B, which would be 4, the adjacent leg, over the hypotenuse, which is 6. And that relationship happens because they're complements of each other. So the sine of A is the same as the cosine of 90 minus A. Mm -hmm. So in other words, the cosine of B. And the same relationship happens with cosine. So the cosine of A, right, would be 5 over 6 is the same as sine of B, which is 5 over 6. So they have a relationship of being complements to each other. Okay. Let's see it in an example. Let's see it in an example, okay? All right. Um, first, let's get some practice with our calculators, and then we'll see some of these in examples, okay? So in your calculators, we're going to find the sine button. So when we did it on our calculators, we got 0 0.5. We got, what was this one, 0 0.5? 7, 6.0, and then 15.0. Oh. All right. We round to what decimal place? The tenths, unless it specifies otherwise. Gucci? All right. 
Find the values of x and y to the nearest integer. All right, what's our angle? 28. How do, in order to find x, which ratio should we use? To sell? So that would be tangent. But we don't know x and we don't know y. What do we know in this problem? x over 1,000. But x over 1,000, what ratio is that? That's opposite over hypotenuse, which is? Sine. sine. So the sine of 28 degrees is going to be x over 1,000. You guys with me? What could we use to find y? The cosine, okay? But we'll do that in a second. How do we solve for x here, guys? Yeah, you can put sine of 28 over 1, cross multiply. You're going to get x equals what? 1,000 times the sine of 28 degrees. Agreed? Because you're cross multiplying. And then plug that into your calculator. The sine of 28 times 1,000, 469.5, x is approximately 469.5. Yeah, that's where we approximate. Mm -hmm. Yes? How do you know that you're supposed to be using the sign? Okay. Well, remember, sign is so, right? S-O-H. What does O stand for? Opposite. Opposite over hypotenuse. So if we're looking for Y, right? Y in relation to 28 is what? Adjacent. Which one involves adjacent and hypotenuse? Cosine. Cosine. So we're going to use cosine to find Y. Does that make sense? Kind of. So why can't we use tangent to start with, guys? We don't have either of the legs. Do you guys see that? So because we're given the hypotenuse, we have to use sine or cosine to start. Now, since we found x, we could use tangent. I don't recommend it because it's going to be a decimal rounded, right? So let's just use what we're given, which is the hypotenuse, which is 1,000, and the adjacent side, which is y. So the cosine of 28, the cosine of 28 degrees, is equal to what? Y over a thousand. Oh my god, that's what I was thinking. Yeah, because remember, adjacent, k, k, so k, c a h, adjacent over hypotenuse. So it's going to be y equals. We cross multiply. 1 times y is just y. Cosine of 28 times 1,000 is going to be 1,000 times cosine of 28, which means that y is approximately the cosine of 28 is 82.9. So, no. Tangent, we're also, whenever you round, we should be putting this approximate symbol. No, it's y is approximately. Those squiggly equal signs means approximate. Technically, we should be using those at any time we round. Okay? No. Any questions? All right, let's do some more. Find x correct to the nearest degree. So x is our missing angle, right? What ratio, be careful here, should we use to figure out x? Savannah? Very good. We're going to use sine. So let's set it up. We're going to use sine because we know the opposite and what else? No, hypotenuse. If we knew opposite and adjacent, what would we use? Tangent. Do you guys see the difference there? 
Okay, so what's the opposite? 18. 18. And what's the hypotenuse? 30. 30. And that's going to be equal to the sine of x degrees, right? Hmm. So we're going to say x is equal to the sine inverse of 18 over 30. Remember, whenever we are missing an angle, are we going to use the sine or the sine inverse? Sine. sine inverse, okay? So in your calculators, do the sine inverse of 18 divided by 30, and you're going to get 36.9. Sophia? Whoops. I missed that. That should be rounded to the nearest degree. So what should it be? 37? Yeah. yeah 37 degrees. Thank you. That should be 37 degrees. Yes. Savannah? What was your way? So you did 18 divided by 30 and then took the sine inverse of it? Oh, <laughs> that is going to be longer, but it should give you the same result. All right. Any questions on this? Yeah. Christian. Yes. Zoe. Why did we use the inverse? Because we're looking for this angle. Do you agree? So we can't divide by sine because sine is our function of an angle, right? So in order to get this sine out of here, we have to take this sine inverse because we're looking for the angle. Okay, if we knew the angle, then we could treat that just as a number, right? Because it would be like the sine of 30, but then x would be somewhere over here. But when x is in your sine function, you have to use the sine inverse. All right, let's do a problem. One. Find the measure of the three angles round to the nearest tenth. All right, so we're going to make our own problem. This one should have been the next lesson. Draw a right triangle, um, make this 16. Make this 20 and make this B, A, and C, and make this one Y degrees. All right, how would we solve for Y? What could we set up? Mariana? We are not going to use sine here. Zoe? Good. This is going to be adjacent over hypotenuse. What letter goes with adjacent and hypotenuse? Cosine. cosine. So, ka. Okay. So, we're going to say the cosine of what? Y. Of y degrees y. equals what? 16 over, 16 over 20. We have adjacent and we have hypotenuse. Okay. Mm -hmm. So now we would use the cosine or the cosine inverse? Inverse. inverse. So we're going to say y degrees equals the cosine inverse of 16 over 20. Plug that into your calculator. 16 divided by 20. And then take the cosine inverse of that answer. We get should get 36.7, correct? So y degrees equals 36.7 degrees. Why would it be the sign of the person who said that we don't have y? Like, was it, were the two legs in a different place? They were. So, no, 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 no. 16 is still a leg. What? You're right. It is 36.9. Thank you. But Mariana brought up a good point. She said, why are we using cosine here and not sine? Do we know the side that's opposite the y? Yeah. So anything with an O, right? Tangent uses opposite and sine uses opposite. We can't use because we don't know CA. Do you guys see that? But we know adjacent and we know hypotenuse. Agreed? Mm -hmm. So we have to use cosine here. <laughs> Make sense? Okay. Let's do another one, guys. All right, you have learned about special right triangles in an earlier lesson. Today, what I want you guys to use is the sine and the cosine ratios for a 30 degrees, 45 degrees, 
and a 60 degrees, okay? So draw two triangles, one being a 30, 60, 90, We just found what the values of the sine and cosine of 30, 45, and 60 are, okay? So we're just, this one? Oh, okay, whoops. All right, sine and cosine and special right triangles. What would the sine and cosine be of 45 degrees? Well, let's draw an angle mark here. The sine of 45 degrees, oops. is going to be what? Well, sine is what? Opposite over hypotenuse. What's opposite that 45 degrees? 1. And what's the hypotenuse? 1 over the square root of 2. The cosine of 45 degrees is what? Well, cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse. Agreed? What's adjacent to the 45? One. One over, and what's the hypotenuse? Square root, Square root of two. Oh. All right, now we're gonna find the sine and the cosine of a 30 degree angle, okay? So this is our 30. Was that it? Yeah, that was it. Oh, yeah. mm -hmm. I mean, if this was asked on a quiz or a test, yes. Okay? All right. So the sine and cosine of a 30-degree angle, okay? What would the sine of this 30 be? 1 over 2. That's where we get the 0 0.5. Do you guys remember that? When we plugged in sine of 30, we got 0 0.5. It's because it's the ratio of 1 over 2. And what if we did the cosine of 30 degrees? Square root 3 over 2. All right, now you remember when I said the sine of an angle is the same as the cosine of 90 minus that angle? So this should be the same as the cosine of 90 minus 30 because they're complements okay just follow along what's 90 minus 30 guys cosine of 60 right if this angle is also 60 what's the cosine of this 60 degree angle one over two do you guys see that how the ratio holds? Yeah. Do we, can we just do it the other way? Or do we have to do it? No, you, I'm just showing you this because we're going to use this later on. Okay? But remember, two acute angles inside a right triangle are complements of each other. Right? So the cosine of this one is going to be the sine of this one and reverse. Okay? So the cosine of 30, right, is going to be the same as the sine of what degrees? 60. Very good. Okay. So put the sine of 60. And what would be the sine of this 60 degree angle? Well, it's opposite over hypotenuse, right? So the square root of 3 over 2. Do you see how these all match? The 1 halves matched and the square root of 3 over 2 matched. Okay. Just making a little connection there. Move on. Okay. All right, so we talked about an angle of elevation, right? And that's where you're going from the ground up. An angle of depression is the angle that a downward line of sight makes with a horizontal line, okay? So this is an above ground to the ground, okay? So this would technically be an elevated surface, okay? And your line of sight would make this angle. So this is our angle of depression, okay? In other words, remember, angle of elevation is going up, from the ground up, this is going from a someplace above ground down, okay? Let's see an example. You are skiing a mountain with an altitude of 1,200 feet. 
the angle of depression is 21 degrees, okay? So do you guys see how a horizontal line is drawn from your current location? And then this angle is now your angle of depression, okay? And it's the angle of depression is 21 degrees. Find the distance X you ski down the mountain to the nearest foot, okay? So what could we use to figure out what X is? Sophia? All you have to use is figure a ratio, right? And we know the opposite, and we're looking for the hypotenuse, agreed? So we're gonna use sine, the sine of 21 equals 1,200 over x. How could we solve this? Cross multiply and put the sine of 21 underneath the 1,200. So x is gonna be equal to 1,200 divided by the sine of 21 degrees. And when you plug that in, the sine of 21, do 1,200 divided by the sine of 21, and you're going to get 3,348.5. Now, one thing to check, okay? Should this be bigger than the 12,000 that we had, or the 1,200 that we had? Why should it be bigger? Very good. It's the hypotenuse, right? So it should be longer than either of the other two sides, okay? So if we were given this one and this was 2,400, would our answer still make sense? Yes. Yeah, because it's bigger than the 2,400, okay? Now, if this side over here was like 6,000, would that answer of 3,348 make sense? Yes. No, because the hypotenuse should be the biggest side. So that's one way you can check. Jaden, what's up? Yes. Were there any other questions on this? All right, clearly there is not.